My name is Alan Gunderson. I'm from Houston, Texas. I want to introduce you to a 1909 Everett Metzger Flanders. This is a car that we restored a few years back and have we, we have finally gotten it mechanically sound so that it can perform on one of these tours to our best ability. This car was produced in the years from 1908 through 1912 by the Everett Metzger Flanders Company. This is a 30 horsepower gasoline engine with three forward speeds and one reverse. As you can see, we have a Studebaker identification tag on it. The EMF company was a precursor to the Studebaker brothers starting in the automobile business. At this time in the country, the Studebaker Brothers Wagon Corporation was selling the car for the Everett Metzger Flanders Corporation in the southern and the western regions of the, of the United States. Therefore, they required that they put an identification tag on there as this car was sold by one of the Studebaker distributors. On the other side, you have an EMF tag that is the factory tag that came with this car with the vehicle identification number on it which matches the vehicle identification number on the engine of this car. Tag on there as this car was sold by one of the Studebaker distributors. On the other side you have an EMF tag that is the factory tag that came with this car with the vehicle identification number on it which matches the vehicle identification number on the engine of this car. As you can see from looking under the hood, this is a four-cylinder gasoline operated engine. We have a carburetor on this side. We have, we have the steering sector on this side. We have a breather tube that provides warm air to help heat the gasoline before it goes into the intake tube, before it goes into each of the cylinders. We have four spark plugs on top, one spark plug for each cylinder. You see the shiny things, the shiny cups on the top of the, each cylinder. Those cups were for cold mornings and you could put gasoline in the cup. You could turn the handle and the gasoline would fall down on top of the piston and then when you crank the car over to start it it would already have gasoline charged cylinder and would fire very easily on either the first or the second or third crank. <laughs> These cylinders are were produced in pairs a front pair and a rear pair. You can take the rear pair and put in the front and the front pair and put in the back by making one change and that is the change right here at the at the fan pivot point. You have also two chambers in the crank case. One, the front chamber holds a quart of oil and the rear chamber holds a quart of oil. The shiny things on top are breathers, like it's one whole crank case, and in most instances it is. What is but it is actually two separate crank cases, one for the front cylinders, one for the back cylinders. This has the crankcase is machined out of one piece of metal, but there is a baffle in the bottom that holds, lets you hold one quart of oil in the front and one quart of oil in the back. On these engines that EMF built, it was very important to unscrew the breather cap and to put your dipstick down in there to make sure that you had one quart of oil in the front and another quart of oil in the back. If you had more in the back than you did the front, then you would be spilling a lot of oil out of the rear main seal. This is known as an updraft carburetor. The carburetors on most of these cars that were built in the early 1900s were put down lower than what the gas tank is. They did not have fuel pumps back then that pumped the gasoline to the carburetor. They were all gravity fed. On this side of the engine, we have what is called the intake manifold, which is this tube right here. The gasoline transfers from across the engine into this tube, and then from this tube into each one of the different cylinders, providing a gas-air mixture for that cylinder to fire to make the car run. On this side also of the engine compartment, we have the magneto, and it is a dual-stage magneto. The magneto is 
charged up by the engine turning. To start the vehicle, we have to use a 6-volt battery to provide the initial electricity that we need to make each one of the spark plugs spark at the correct time. Also on this side of the car, you'll see that EMF incorporated a modern, semi-modern water pump so that it could circulate water from the radiator through the water pump, through the brass tubes, into the water jackets that are around each one of the cylinder. The first pair of cylinders first, and then it would transfer across this brass tube down into the rear cylinders, and then come back to the radiator and with the air flowing and the fan pulling air through the radiator it would continue to cool the water so that the, your engine stayed cool and did not overheat. These cars did not have thermostats on them like our modern cars do today. So they were very efficient and this car has not overheated since we've been here. On, on, also on this side of the engine, this is an oil reserve tank. It holds approximately three to four quarts of oil with a glass sight glass under this bolt right here. And every day you would check that sight glass to see if oil was in that sight glass, meaning that you still had a reserve of oil in your reserve tank. As the level of oil dropped from the crankcase, a little valve under this nut right here would open up and let enough oil go from the reserve tank into the crankshaft, crankcase, and then as it filled up to its proper level, this little valve would shut off and continue to hold the rest of your oil in reserve. As we're looking at this side of the engine, once again, we have four spark plugs, one for each cylinder, and we have four priming cups, one for each cylinder. Underneath these items are what we call valve caps. They allow you access to the top of the piston. They allow you access to your valves so that if you have to change your valves, you undo the springs, you push the valve stem up, and you can reach in here and pull the valve out so that you can regrind the valve to reseat it and then put it back in and lock everything back down. There are no removable cylinder heads like there are on modern cars now. Your cylinder head and everything was cast right in this section of two cylinders. Your valves are open stem valves where that you can see and see them operate as the car is running. You, and you have clearance between these valves to keep from breaking the valve stems off. These springs are not as heavy duty as the springs that we see in our modern vehicles now. They're very lightweight and you can actually change these springs and valves out with your hands and not with a valve spring compressor. Much like the cars of this era, they had acetylene gas operated headlights and it was operated by an acetylene tank mounted on the frame that provided the gas up to the light and then you would open your lens door and you would take a match and you would light the acetylene gas that comes out of this ceramic port right here. Close your door and you would have a, you have a reflector in the back of that light that throws the maximum amount of light through the glass lens out onto the road in front of you. The side lamps on the firewall are oil-based lamps. The container on the bottom holds the, the lamp oil. The wick is inside the glass. And you would open the door on the back side, light the wick with your match, and you would adjust the amount of flame by, by having the wick go up or go down. We're at the back of the vehicle now, and this was what was provided as our tail lamp. You see the red lens here, and you see the clear lens here. And it is also oil-based lamp. It has a cup in it that has oil in the cup, and it has a wick. And you would open the door, you would light your wick, and then you would adjust the wick up or down to provide the amount of light that you wanted to come out through your tail light lamp. One of the things that EMF incorporated is elliptical springs. These are fully elliptical springs. 
we feel like this provided a very superior ride to the other vehicles that were produced at this time. We're going to talk about the brake system on the EMF now. These are exterior band brakes that have a fiber in here in between the metal band and the drum. One of the things that the EMF did was they made a covered rear part of the drum to keep dust, dirt, and other debris out of the interior workings of the ends of the axle. While we're here at the rear of the car, let's talk about the axle and the transmission. EMF was one of the corporations that built the transmission onto the axle. This provided a more efficient drivetrain and gear transfer from the front of the vehicle to the rear of the vehicle with a minimum amount of slack and inefficiency of a drive shaft. This is the rear axle. Here is the fill plug where you keep your fluid levels up. In front of that is the transmission with an inspection plate on top of the transmission so that you could very easily check to make sure that you had plenty of grease and oil in both, in both areas. On further up under the car, you'll see the two rods that allow the transmission to be shifted from first to second to third and then also reverse. Right below those two rods, you're going to see a long shaft that goes all the way up to the clutch that's uh, on the back side of the engine flywheel. Also, EMF put in stabilizer rods. Because these transaxles were so heavy and beefy, they felt like they needed to have something to give it a little more stability back to the outside of the axles. On the springs, you have oiler cups that you put oil in so that you keep this pivot free. You also have oil cups here to oil the axle bearings. This is what EMF called their roadster with a single bucket. In that day, any gentleman that owned a, a vehicle was considered to be possibly could be shady, especially as he was dating your daughter. And so one of the issues that the car companies did back there was to provide a place for a chaperone to ride so that they could see and maintain some kind of control over both the young man and young woman as they was out and about. Once you have your gasoline, you have your oil, and you have your water in the car at the proper levels, the only thing left to add to this vehicle is your pretty wife so that you both can go for a nice evening drive in Mount Dora, Florida.